Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm from Graham. Ahead today, a surprise announcement from Israel withdrawing a key division from southern Gaza ahead of the expected invasion of Rafah. We'll take a look at why Israel made this move and the plans for its next attack on Hamas. Here in the U.S., millions preparing today for today's total solar eclipse as it crosses a densely populated area of the country, bringing darkness for more than five, four minutes, along with a drop in temperature. Could terrorists strike in America? We're going to hear a warning that Hamas and Hezbollah don't want to just strike in Israel. They're also targeting the United States, and some terrorists could be coming across the southern border. And how one high school student in West Virginia went to work to allow the teaching of the intelligent design viewpoint of the origin of the universe and how he won his battle. All those stories and more today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. We begin this half hour with a surprise announcement from Israel Sunday. It has pulled a key division out of the southern Gaza Strip, six months of the day after Hamas terrorist attacks and massacres on Israel. It's a major shift in the war, but as Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, Israel's leadership believes the final defeat of Hamas is near. Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, says the pullout is a sign that Hamas is severely weakened as a fighting force. Hamas ceased to function as a military organization throughout the Gaza Strip. But within an hour, Hamas terrorists were firing rockets at seven Israeli communities from the area the IDF troops had just left. On the tactical level, what you can read into it is that the IDF is pulling out troops in order to get them some rest and time to reorganize in order to be prepared for the next stage of missions. That's one way of looking at it. Jonathan Canricas, a former IDF spokesman and a lieutenant colonel in the reserves, says that next stage of mission would be an invasion of Rafa. He also says the move can be seen as a result of American pressure. There was a few days ago an important and reportedly heated conversation between the president and the prime minister, and uh, demands were made, and you could think that what Israel is doing now is an implementation of those demands. Kanrika says the IDF is also preparing for a greater conflict with Hezbollah. Time will have to tell, and we will have to wait which one of the options it was, but it could be either one or a combination of all. Still, as fighting reaches the six-month mark, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu sees the elimination of Hamas just ahead. We're marking today six months of war. We're one step away from victory. Netanyahu and Gallant insist on an invasion of Rafa, where Hamas's last intact battalions are holding up. As it has for weeks, the White House disagrees. All I can do is say what I said before. We don't support a major ground operation in Rafah. That has not changed. And we're looking forward to having conversations with the Israelis about alternatives to those kinds of operations. Some families of hostages held in Gaza mark the six-month anniversary of their captivity at demonstrations in Washington and Jerusalem. Hostage mother Rachel Goldberg Poland told CBS Face the Nation she's in D.C. to find what more can be done to free the hostages. What levers need to be pulled in order to make this happen? Because six months is actually a complete failure on everybody's part, and we are feeling extreme desperation, despair. Netanyahu says his government won't buckle to international pressure on a ceasefire without freedom for the hostages. I made it clear to the international community there will be no ceasefire without the return of hostages. It just won't happen. Chris Mitchell joins us right now with more. So, Chris, what is the current status of the hostage talks? Well, Ephraim, right now there were talks yesterday in Cairo with CIA Director William Burns uh, and a member of Qatar was there, representative. A lot of people are saying Qatar really should be getting much of the pressure because it's a sponsor uh, of Hamas and has given them billions uh, over the last 17 years or so. You know, one point uh, to be made, and I heard this uh, yesterday in a podcast, uh, Ephraim, is there's two phrases about the hostages. One is bring them home, and that really puts pressure on the Netanyahu government. Uh, the other one is let them go, which puts pressure on Hamas 
who are the ones that actually holding them. Many of the demands made on the Netanyahu government are almost impossible to do. They, they, t people say they can't sacrifice the country for the fate of the hostages, as, as difficult it is this. Uh, you know, it's such a hard thing for um, people here in Israel. Yesterday, this was the front page of the Haaretz, uh, 133 hostages right now. If you go around here, uh, Ephraim, you'll see banners, posters at bus stops out and all over. Uh, it's really an anguishing uh, six months for many of these families, uh, but also the whole nation is really grieving over these more than 100 hostages. Indeed. What's the response from within Israel uh, and the government from the pullout of Gaza? Well, two, actually, uh, in, in specifically National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gavir, he's issued a threat against uh, Netanyahu not to halt the war in Gaza. Uh, he says if they do that without a large-scale offensive in Rafah, which Netanyahu says will still happen, uh, you know, that may, he may not have a mandate to continue as prime minister. Another finance minister, Bezalel Smoltrich, he issued another statement calling on prime minister Netanyahu to convene the security cabinet to discuss the whole state of the war in Gaza. Uh, it was a surprise announcement, but as Jonathan Kenrika said, it could be one of three things, American pressure, it could be preparing for uh, an operation up in the north, and it can also be a tactical uh, decision just to refit and retool this, uh, this, battal this division so they can join that battle in, uh, in Rafah. The Biden administration says it still does not support a major Israeli ground operation against the last Hamas stronghold in Rafah. But you interviewed former Israeli military spokesperson Jonathan Kenrikis. What is the sense of the upcoming Rafah invasion? Well, there's a sense that it will happen, and it may happen uh, after Ramadan, just a couple of more days. And Ramadan, the month-long uh, uh, holiday for Muslims, will be over. And uh, he says that would be a likely time when this invasion, incursion into Rafah will happen. Uh, but he also says that you have to get the civilians out of harm's way, and that may take three weeks or up to the month. Uh, he believes that could be why the troops have been pulled out to prepare for the Rafa invasion. Uh, but certainly the last major thing before to try to eliminate Hamas and destroy Hamas with the perhaps four to six uh, Hamas battalions still remaining there in Rafa and using that civilian population as uh, human shields to try to uh, but come against any sort of IDF incursion. Another story in the headlines this weekend has been Iran's promises of retaliation for the airstrike in Damascus. Some expect a serious response from Iran. Others don't believe they'll actually launch any major attacks. What are you hearing there? Well, I've heard that they could launch an attack against an Israeli diplomatic post because the uh, strike in, in Damascus was against uh, the Iranian consulate there in, in the city. Uh, but Iran could wait for retaliation. Uh, they call that strategic uh, patience. And, uh, or they may use one of their proxies to retaliate. I've heard stories maybe they'll use a swarm of drones. Uh, but they may not hit directly uh, from Iranian territory, not wanting uh, a direct attack against Israel that would presumably bring a direct uh, attack by Israel against Iran itself. And they may continue to use Hezbollah uh, on the northern border to keep, uh, to keep Israel off guard and to keep nearly 100,000 Israelis uh, off of the, uh, the Lebanese-Israeli border out of their homes and their livelihood. Chris, what are you hearing about the northern border? Well, you know, Ephraim, the longer you're here, here and the closer we get to May and June, you hear about the possibility or inevitability or high likelihood about, uh, about an, a, a major battle between Hezbollah and Israel. Major preparations are being made here in Israel. Uh, part of the pullout, as I said before, may be related to getting ready for the north. Uh, and what would those signs be uh, to actually a big war in the north would be when any incursion with Rafa is over, when the weather is good. The, the weather is still a bit uh, uh, rainy up there in the north. And so when the ground is dry, they say that's a good time. And when the IDF is ready and they're saying this kind of war up there in the north, uh, Ephraim, would be orders of magnitude bigger than any war with Hamas.
All right, Chris Mitchell reporting from Jerusalem. Thank you so much as always. We appreciate your insights, encourage you to stay safe and know that many people here back at home are praying for you and the entire staff there in Israel. Here in the U.S., millions of sky watchers have gathered along a narrow corridor stretching from Mexico to Canada, eagerly awaiting today's total solar eclipse of the sun. CBN's Dale Hurd is on that story. It's North America's biggest eclipse audience ever. Thanks to the densely populated path it will take across the U.S. and all the social media buzz surrounding it. We've been talking about coming here for this event since, what, three months before she was born? In the zone of totality, a four-hour trek stretching from Texas all the way to Maine and 115 miles wide, the darkness will last up to four and a half minutes. Temperatures will drop as much as 10 degrees. So many visitors have traveled to see the phenomenon roads could be clogged and some areas have declared a state of emergency because of all the visitors. But whatever you do, don't try to view the eclipse without the proper eye protection. Looking at the sun with the naked eye is incredibly dangerous. The sun's UV radiation is capable of destroying the soft tissue in the back of your eyeballs. I got the uh, certified safety eyewear. I got UV filters for my camera. Almost everyone in North America will be guaranteed at least a partial eclipse, weather permitting. Unfortunately, some areas could only see clouds. The best weather is expected in New England and Canada. They do have weather concerns, but are really hopeful that we're going to have a very good experience. It's going to be disappointing, definitely, if it's cloudy. The timing and location of this particular eclipse has some reading biblical and prophetic significance. The fact that it goes over seven cities called Nineveh and one called Jonah makes you wonder, is this our Nineveh moment, America, a time to reflect on where we stand on a lot of issues. The next total solar eclipse in 2026 will only be seen over the Atlantic and in Spain. Alaska will have one in 2033, and the next chance for the lower 48 won't come for another 20 years. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Coming up, could the U.S. be a target of a terrorist attack? We're going to hear from an analyst who warns groups like Hamas and Hezbollah are targeting more than just Israel. They're coming after America as well. We're going to bring you the story. we got it for you when we come back. You're watching CBN News Watch. Get your daily quick start from CBN News. A quick read on the important news of the day delivered right to your inbox. Stay current on breaking news, politics, and entertainment. Go to quickstart.news and subscribe today. Iran's latest threats plus terrorist attacks in the Middle East and Russia have leaders worried it could happen here in the United States. Since 2020, more than 2 million people who are unaccounted for have crossed the southern border. And it's not just the ones on the terrorism watch list who are raising concerns. CBN's Gary Lane brings us the story. The recent arrest of a Hezbollah bomb maker at the southern border and ISIS terrorists striking a Moscow nightclub have national security experts concerned the U.S. is also vulnerable. Jonathan Tobin of the Jewish News Syndicate believes Iranian proxies, Hamas and Hezbollah, are targeting more than just Israel. America is a target, too, of Islamist terrorism. And until we have a government that takes this seriously, that takes border security seriously, we have good reason to worry that this could happen here. U.S. Customs and Border Protection have reported apprehending 70 illegal immigrants on the terrorism watch list since October. There are also concerns, however, about special interest aliens. Labeled as SIAs, these are individuals who may be considered suspicious based on their travel patterns, behavior, or country of origin. In the summer of 2023, the Daily Caller published data revealing Customs and Border Protection had flagged about 75,000 SIAs between October 2022 and August 2023. During a recent Senate Intelligence Committee hearing, Senator James Lankford asked FBI Director Christopher Wray about these special interest aliens. Is the FBI kept in contact 
from DHS and others who those individuals are or what kind of tracking and monitoring is on those individuals? I know that we work closely with DHS, especially CBP, on the issue of special interest aliens, including uh, a whole lot of work on the other side of the border to try to prevent them from coming in in the first place. And I know there are instances where we're contacted, but I, I'm not sure that, I, as I sit here right now, I can tell you that we're contacted in every, in every instance. It's the criminal getaways, those in the country illegally and not monitored by the FBI and police, that worry many Americans. An illegal immigrant charged with the murder of nursing student Lakin Riley and the attack on New York City police officers by Venezuelan migrants are just two recent examples. Young Voices commentator and writer for The Spectator, Venezuelan-American Juan Pablo Villasmil, argues government agencies need to do more to keep SIA criminals out of the country. He believes some special interest aliens are members of a notorious Venezuelan gang. In New York City, NYPD has already determined that there is a presence of the trend de Aragua in the city. And as we see crime spread throughout the United States, many of them being brutal crime, a lot of people are asking themselves, how many members of the trend de Aragua are already inside the United States? While solutions to prevent criminals from entering the United States are under debate, Senator Marco Rubio doesn't believe the recently withdrawn border bill would have fixed the problem. He thinks presidential action would make a difference. The way you fix the problem is by reversing the executive orders that, that the President Biden put in place in his first month in office, which directly led to this crisis. An immigration crisis and national security threats that many Americans feel cannot wait until the next president and Congress take office. Gary Lane, CBN News. Still ahead, how one high school student in West Virginia took on the ban on teaching the intelligent design view of the creation of the universe and one. We'll bring you the story right after this. For years, teachers have been limited in teaching students about the creation of the universe that included staying away from intelligent design, which has been considered taboo because of its ties to the Bible. But one West Virginia high school student felt that was unfair. So he helped to draft a bill allowing West Virginia teachers to cover scientific theory, which includes intelligent design. Wendy Griffith introduces us to Hayden Hodge, who took on the creation debate and won. Two years ago, 16-year-old West Virginia high school student Hayden Hodge decided to help his teachers increase the scientific theories they could include in lessons on how the world came to be. While Big Bang and evolution made the list, the theory that perhaps God created all of this, the universe and humanity supernaturally, did not. So I think a lot of it was fear. They were just afraid of if, if a student asked a question like that and they answered it truthfully, then they were afraid of, you know, uh, anything that could happen to them with their jobs or in their personal life or anything like that. And, uh, you know, like I said, with that science teacher, he was afraid to even, you know, have conversations like that. And yeah. I thought this needs to change. He needs to feel like he can talk about this without any fear of losing his job. With the help of his father, Tony, and some West Virginia lawmakers, Hayden drafted a bill that would allow teachers to include discussion of intelligent design. Hayden kind of, he spearheaded this himself. I mean, he came to me and asked for my advice. Uh, Dad, how can we do this or whatever? And I, I just kind of gave him a little bit of advice. I said, but if you want to do it, you need to be the one to head it up. And so he sat down and did research and he, he ended up working on the language himself and uh, talked to the senator that represents our district and went to her who, she happens to be the chair of the education committee, Senator Amy, Amy Grady. Um, he took it to her and um, from there, the ball just kept rolling and we're really proud of him and all of his efforts. Due to political pushback, they agreed to take the phrase intelligent design out of the bill, although it still allows West Virginia public school teachers to discuss it in the classroom. A majority of the members present having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. Some senators saw it as the easiest vote they cast all year. You have to understand in West Virginia, this is a God-fearing state. The people here love the Lord, they love God, they love Jesus. 
And um, when people have things like this presented before them, they put God first in their lives. And the same goes for our legislators in this building behind me. Governor Jim Justice, an outspoken Christian, signed it into law in March. Anyone that denies God's presence is just not looking and just absolutely not with it. And so for our teachers to be able to teach the foundation of all of our lives, well, why wouldn't they teach it? We can teach about evolution or teach Big Bang or whatever it may be. The reason would only tell you, well, of course, of course we've got to teach intelligent design. We're blessed to have a wonderful young man that brought it to our attention. Hayden vividly remembers the day it passed the Senate. It felt fantastic. I remember being up in the gallery and the second that it passed uh, overwhelmingly, I got super excited. I remember my give, giving my dad a high five and that was just one of the coolest things ever. I looked over my, my mom and she was kind of smiling and kind of crying at the same time. So it was really fun. While Mississippi, Louisiana and Tennessee have similar legislation, Governor Justice hopes West Virginia's version will help encourage other states to follow suit. If we're the first in West Virginia to do this, it'll spread all across the land. You wait and see. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Charleston, West Virginia. Coming up, we'll be back with an encouraging word for your day ahead. You're watching CBN News Watch. Stay with us. Download the CBN News app 24 7 News from a Christian perspective at home or on the road. One place for all of your news. Breaking news alerts. Set daily prayer goals and pray for news stories. Read the most important news and watch CBN News Channel Live. CBN News, because truth matters. Go to CBNNewsApp.com to get the app today. Welcome back. Time now for your Monday motivation. I leave you with this thought as we begin another week together. Embrace the weight and grow patient. Sometimes the weight is heavier than the weight of what you're looking to see changed, move, or overcome. But I say, wait on the Lord. And again, I say, wait on the Lord. Well, that will do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. You can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News channel at any time, as well as online, cbnnews.com. Take a moment, let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at cbn.com. Come on back. We look forward to seeing you right back here tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.